You know what we haven't done in a while? Let's get down to some theme park rumors, shall we? You know, there was actually a time where I worked at a theme park. Uh, it was uh, many years ago, but I was part of the, the Disney's college program, which was uh, not necessarily a great experience uh, from start to finish or anything like that. But uh, one of the things that kind of stood out to me is, uh, so we lived in an apartment with uh, three other guys there. Um, they really, they pack them in. Like they would have two people live in each bedroom and then multiple bedrooms. We actually paid more so that we would only have four people total in the apartment. But you could do up to four bedrooms. So there would be eight people in one place sharing a kitchen, sharing a living room, and just people that you've never met before. And it was crazy. So because you've never met these people before, you get all sorts of personalities. You get all sorts of, I mean, uh, yeah, you think, I mean, just being with your coworkers. Imagine kind of living with your coworkers, even if they weren't the same people. Um, and uh, most of my roommates were were pretty cool, reasonable guys. Um, and then and then there was Teddy. Teddy was was uh, whew, ah, he was a he was a guy from Boston, which is this is not. A reflection of Boston. Uh, they they have people like this in any city all over the place. But it oh oh god, Teddy Teddy was dumb. Teddy was real dumb. And you know what? You're allowed to be dumb. You don't have to be an intelligent person to be a good person. But Teddy was was dumb, and he was not a good person, and kind of a lazy person. And there there were a number. Teddy made poor choices for himself. And for all of us, um, so we're we're in this living situation where uh, we are sharing everything. We shared, you know, the the food, the living space, the everything. Uh, and so, in many cases, it gets to be easier to hey, uh, let's all pitch in for groceries, and then we eat the groceries. Um, and kind of works out that way. Teddy did not want to pitch in for the groceries. He felt like it would be. Um, Better for him financially if he went his own way, which is fine in theory. Uh, uh, in practice, not as much because, well, he was eating a lot of our food and he was using a lot of our stuff. And this happened a lot and we would kind of call him out on it and he would he would say that he was not eating our food, that he was not using our stuff. Um, and this got to be incredibly frustrating. You know, at one point he bought one of those big containers of, of frozen ground chuck just just like a meat log just a meat log wrapped in plastic and it was in the freezer and then he decided he was going to use it I, I don't know what he intended to use it for it goes nowhere so he takes it out of the freezer and he puts it on a cutting board and he takes the biggest sharpest just kind of butchery knife that he's got and he just tries to cut into this frozen log of beef and he eventually gets about halfway through, um, and I, I believe uh, he said, like, Dag, this is hard, yo. Uh, yes, that is, I, uh... and so he took the knife, and he just put it down on the counter, and he decided, as he did most nights, that he was going to go to the club. So he was going to go to Pleasure Island, and, um... Uh, try to drink, uh, meet people. I, I don't, I don't know what Teddy would do at the club. I know some things Teddy would do at the club, but I don't. Hmm. So Teddy left the meat out and the knife out, and the rest of us were real curious. I mean, it was his meat. He bought the meat. I, if it goes bad, that's that's on him. I, we're not, we're not in charge of Teddy's stuff. And so we, we decided to see how long the meat would stay there. We wanted to see how long the meat would stay there. Do you know, do you know how long the meat stayed on the counter? It was like three days. It was like three days that this meat stayed on the counter bleeding and leaking and he's just uh, dripping on the side of the cutting board and the knife is just sitting there and it smelled terrible uh, we ended up 
getting rid of it. We ended up taking care of it because Teddy was not going to do anything. But it got so bad with our science and social experiment of horror, I ended up getting bacterial pneumonia. And I had to spend a few days out of work because Teddy's just an idiot. So we decided that we, we wanted to punish Teddy, but at the same time, we didn't want to... Uh, there was no like easy, good way to punish Teddy. We had to figure out some way to let Teddy punish himself. So, uh, one other thing that uh, we, we noticed that Teddy wasn't paying for uh, was toilet paper. So we took all the toilet paper and we locked it up. We locked it up and we hid it. Um, uh, even his immediate roommate took some and just like he kept it hidden so that Teddy couldn't have uh, access to it. And at the time, uh, my parents had sent me a care package with uh, uh, just culinary wonders like Hamburger Helper, which was really, I mean, for bachelor life, Hamburger Helper was, re was the thing. Uh, and, uh, and cookie mixes, some like chocolate chip cookie mix. And we got an idea because Teddy would help himself to our things. So we, uh, we took a, a spin down to the local Walgreens and we picked up some chocolate laxative. You, uh, you, you see where this is, you see where this is going? We picked up chocolate laxative and we, uh, we took the batch. We didn't want to ruin the whole batch. So we, we mixed up the, the batch of care package cookies and then we split it in half and half of it we baked normal the other pack, we put some of the chocolate laxative in and made it extra chocolatey, and we mixed it up. Uh, so we baked them all up, and we uh, we ate the the good cookies. We ate and, and put aside the cookies. And then the other cookies with the laxative, we put on a plate, and we left it on the counter, and we said nothing. We said nothing to anybody. We didn't offer it to anybody. Teddy knew he was not supposed to eat our food, and we would not eat his food and take care of everything like that. Uh, and we just left the plate out. We all went to bed early. Uh, we, I think we all had to wake up early or something like that, but we went to bed. And when we woke up, the plate was empty. The plate was empty. There was nothing on the plate but crumbs of, of this chocolatey goodness. I, I will say it was uh, disappointing because uh, we, we didn't get any direct feedback. We didn't ask him about anything. We, uh, we didn't ask him about any trouble with the toilet paper or uh, any bowel issues. Or, I mean, we just, but he also, he didn't say anything. He didn't mention anything. Uh, but we, we just imagined that he probably had a bad time. And he did it to himself because he made poor choices and Teddy was dumb. Enough of that. Let's take a look at some theme park rumors that I've uh, I've been able to go through and round up. Now, remember, uh, half of the fun of theme park rumors is uh, some of these things. Some of these things are verified. Some of these things I'm going to say them, and you know that they're going to be true. I'm going to know they're going to be true. Some of this stuff, uh, who knows? Things could change all the time. I have what I want. You have what you want. Uh, might be somewhere in the middle. Let's start off at Universal Orlando. Looks like Fear Factor Live will be torn down very soon. Uh, it's expected to be turned into an expansion for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. This is likely going to be a virtual reality attraction that will allow you to fly on a broomstick. Um, I think I've heard that that was originally slated for something over at uh, uh, Universal's Epic Universe, the new park that they're going to be building, but that thing's kind of got pushed back, And and but anyway, it should be uh, pretty darn cool. Uh, Shrek 4D will be closing, unfortunately, permanently after uh, this year's holiday season here in 2021. So, um, eh, that will be... No, there's no word as to what might replace it, but yeah, Shrek 4D is unfortunately going the way of the Dodo. So, that, you know, I, mm, I don't know how I feel about that because I don't know what's going to be replacing it. Like, I felt so hopeful when Terminator closed... Um, and when it might be a Star Trek attraction, I was super excited, and then it wasn't, and it's Born Identity, and I, um, I don't know, I haven't seen it yet. Well, we actually might go see it this weekend, but uh, huh, I guess I'm just butthurt. Uh, also, uh, Revenge of the Mummy will be closing temporarily after the holiday season, and it will be reopening in the late summer. It'll likely be uh, retracked, have some refreshed visuals, so uh, that'll be that'll be cool. Revenge of the Mummy is a really nice kind of classic coaster there. 
Uh, there's also rumors uh, of in Universal City Walk that there's going to be an escape room and a comedy club maybe coming to Universal City Walk in the next couple of years or so. Uh, no current word as to where it would be, what it would be taking over, because they don't necessarily have like room to spare where they can build something else. I imagine they would be taking something else uh, out. Um, yeah, I don't know. Going to uh, Islands of Adventure. Starting November 13th, uh, Christmas will once again return to Hogsmeade this year. You know, I think I even heard a rumor that it may be happening even earlier than that. It might be going on right now. But yeah, there's going to be holiday-themed decor, hot butter beer, be uh, Christmas carols performed by the pro- by the Frog Choir, and the magic of Christmas at Hogwarts Castle projection show will return as well. Unfortunately, uh, what's uh, really kind of tragic to me, Poseidon's Fury still has not reopened since the entire park shut down for COVID, but it looks like the entire attraction is being refurbished along with some upgrades that will enhance the quality of the attraction for the future. Which I very much hope that that's the case, because I love uh, Poseidon's Fury. It's one of my favorite attractions at Universal, and uh, I've been so worried that that's something that they were going to take down, that they were going to get rid of. But uh, so I, I hope that they just kind of make it better and uh, and go for there. Let's hop over to Sea World. In March of 2022, so in March of next year, uh, SeaWorld's planning on debuting a new roller coaster called Icebreaker, which will feature four launches, both backwards and forwards, culminating in a reverse launch into the steepest beyond vertical drop in Florida, a 93-foot-tall spike with a 100-degree angle, which sounds kind of crazy. So I've seen some uh, some projected videos on, uh, on the web, on YouTube, so feel free to uh, um, take a look uh, if you need to, I don't know, pause this, maybe right-click the tab where where we are and just say duplicate, and that way it'll still be YouTube, and then on the other one, I mean, you could pause this, otherwise I'll be talking over the roller coaster, and uh, I mean, we'll move on to other things. But you take that, and you, then you take the YouTube, and you type in SeaWorld Icebreaker, and you get to see the, uh, the track, and uh, it looks like it should be a really cool coaster. So I think SeaWorld does a really good job of coasters here in uh, Orlando as it is. Uh, Disney World. Sorry, so Fast Pass is dead, and it will become part of the, uh, the Disney Genie system. FastPass operations ceased when the parks closed for the pandemic and uh, has not and will not return. Soon, uh, all right, so the Disney's got the Disney Genie thing that has recently kind of started up. There's a, a regular version and a paid version. Uh, Jesse and I actually just went to Epcot um, a week or two ago, so we got to witness this Disney Genie thing, which I'm still kind of getting the grips on, figuring out what in the world, how in the world... Um, so there are some free features as well as there are some that require uh, additional charge. Like uh, you get kind of your 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 lightning lane is what they're calling it now. It's kind of like a fast pass and you can kind of reserve a thing sometimes with other times. But then there are some of them which you don't. Like you can pay for. Like when we, we saw the Frozen ride and they're like, oh yes, you can buy a lightning lane entrance here. And it was like $11 a person or something like that. Uh... So you can, uh, the free version, you can plan your itinerary, including dining and attractions. The planning tool will, will make recommendations based on your wishes. And the itinerary is updated throughout the day. Which, uh, well, yeah, that's kind of how it worked. And it was kind of neat. Uh, for an extra $15 per ticket, you can get the paid version, where guests will have access to shorter wait times at many attractions throughout the day. And you can enter through that lightning lane. Uh, so I guess uh, so I guess you can't do the lightning lane if it's just the free version I guess I guess yeah we used it we used it a bunch of times uh, an additional pricing uh, d- uh, dynamic option is available for higher demand attractions like a uh, seven dwarves mine train uh, they would be over the fifteen dollar per day ticket for access to the lightning lane guests will be able to make up to two reservations per day at the higher demand attractions and those reservations will see a return time as well. Uh, specifically looking at Epcot. So um, they're, they're moving away from Future World and World Showcase. There's now, uh, there's now neighborhoods. The, 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 what are the attractions in the neighborhood? Um, uh, so there's Future World has been changed into three different neighborhoods consisting of World Discovery, World Celebration, and World Nature. 
those are going to be kind of the areas. Right now, it's like world construction walls. It's just, it's like a labyrinth just to get from, uh, I'm still going to call it future world for now, because I'm not convinced that this is cohesive yet, to get from there into world showcase. But in theory, once the whole thing is put together, all right, so you're looking at uh, world discovery, that is Mission Space, that is Test Track, that is the upcoming Play Pavilion that is supposed to be opening next year, and there's the upcoming Cosmic Rewind Guardians of the Galaxy, which is also supposed to be opening next year. You get to World Celebration, you have Spaceship Earth, you have the Epcot Experience, whatever that is. There's uh, the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, which is uh, it's what they put in where Captain EO was, or where, you know, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. That, that in the Imagination Theater... That's where they put that. We didn't get a chance to check that out because we were, we were busy. It was Food and Wine Festival, which was great. It was good, but we didn't know. Um, also, Journey into Imagination. That is also part of the World Celebration. Finally, the, the third kind of neighborhood in that area is uh, World Nature, which has the Awesome Planet video, which is located uh, in the Land Pavilion. The Soaring Around the World, Living with the Land, pretty much that whole pavilion. The, the Seas with Nemo and Friends, Turtle Talk with Crush, and sea base, uh, pretty much that whole what used to be the living seas, and then the seas, and then sea base, or whatever, I don't know, whatever they're calling it now. So all that's going to be part of uh, world nature, and so that's what those those different neighborhoods are going to be. So there's a, a few different interesting kind of theme park rumors that have been kicking around, so hopefully you, uh, you enjoy that. I'd love to know what kind of theme park information you would love to hear. So comment below as to uh, what type of stuff you're interested in and maybe what you found most interesting during this video. Don't forget to uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on those notifications if you want to know every time that I drop a video. And of course, check us out at uh, richdoesathing.com, Rich Does a Thing on Facebook, Rich Does a Thing on Instagram. We have a Patreon to get some uh, information before everyone else. And uh, follow us everywhere. Thank you for watching, and we will see you next time. <laughs>